which I'm not going to share in my presentation today because I'm really going to talk to you about how to set up yourself to look like a leader, to really you know, present your business in a really powerful way. But at the end of the day, what I do teach, and of course I could spend three days teaching you guys everything uh, there is to know about LinkedIn, but what I do teach is how to use it to build relationships and move the conversations offline. Because it's offline that business happens. So I love everything that you guys are talking about. I just spoke in Amsterdam yesterday, and I said, you know, old school methods, what we now call old school, they still work. And in fact, I think they work more than ever because we're so tied to digital stuff. And I actually like cringe when I have to post things on social media because I really don't feel like it most of the time unless it's LinkedIn because I really like to share business things. I don't like to share personal things. Unfortunately, because of the nature of my business, my business is called Top Dog Social Media. I kind of have to. <laughs> when I started my business, my plan was to do all social media for businesses. That quickly changed where I realized the vast majority of the results that I was getting for clients were coming from LinkedIn. So why not really specialize in LinkedIn? And so I do two primary things now. I help business owners, individuals, and sales teams leverage LinkedIn and social selling. And many years ago, I've been teaching social selling for many years and people didn't really know what that meant. Here's my definition of social selling. It's relationship building. That's all it is. It's lead generation through relationship building. So your LinkedIn profile is often your very first online impression. How many ladies in the room are single? Raise your hand. Okay, so if you meet a new guy, I don't know how you meet him, whether it's online or you know, you're introduced to him or wherever that is. Do you Google his name after you meet him? You want to check him out? You probably go to his Facebook profile, right? Because that's where you can find personal things about them. Here's the thing. Oh my God, there is gold in Facebook profiles. It tells you everything about who somebody is. And ladies, go through two years of stuff. You'll know exactly who that man is. And more often than not, run, don't walk. <laughs> But if they're interested in learning more about you from a business perspective, they're going to click on your LinkedIn profile. You know what that means? It means your LinkedIn profile is often your very first online impression. What kind of impression are you currently making? And I'm sure you're all saying, I'm not very good. I've got some work to do. That's why I'm here today. So let me give you some, some strategies. But before I do, I want to talk to you about why this is so important. Why it's so important that you don't just listen to what I say today and not do anything with it. Because your LinkedIn profile can attract leads and clients to you organically. Now please don't rely on that. I really believe that results in business comes from your proactive use of tools, but sometimes it happens. It enhances your professional reputation. It builds your credibility and your authority. It establishes trust much faster, facilitates relationships, and especially relationships with decision makers. If you're trying to connect with a potential prospect, a decision maker, they're going to check out your profile before they click that accept button. And, it's, and you want to stand out and you want to leave a lasting impression. That's what you want to do. If your LinkedIn profile is going to be your first professional online impression, make sure you stand out. At the end of the day, you know, people want to connect with people. And so I've seen a lot of people on LinkedIn where they'll use their business logo as their, your, their profile picture because they're like, I really don't want to be online. And for those of you that don't want to be online or be social, stick with LinkedIn. You don't have to share anything personal, but you do have to share your profile picture. You have to connect with people because people connect with pictures. They don't connect with logos. See the disconnection there? 
And at the end of the day, you know, no matter who you're selling to, whether you're selling to IBM or you're selling to the biggest companies in the world, you're actually connecting with a decision maker, a person. So there's three things that your LinkedIn profile must achieve. The first is it needs to establish your authority and your credibility, specifically on your topic, your industry, or your niche. The second is it needs to describe the problems that you solve, how you help people. And from that, it's going to create and develop engagement and trust. The only thing that somebody's interested in knowing about you, when it comes from a professional standpoint, we're talking about using LinkedIn as a business building tool, is who do you help? What problems can you solve for them? Who else have you helped? Social proof. And anybody familiar with that acronym WIIFM? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> anybody know what that is? Right. That's what they're thinking. They're thinking, what's in it for me? How can you help me? So I'm going to share with you seven steps uh, that you can take to optimize your LinkedIn profile. And then I'm going to get a little bit more tactical. And I'm going to talk about three of the most important sections of your profile and what to do to write them. Because I know most people are confused. They're like, well, what do I write? So the first step is you want to get found. I said that from time to time, people can actually find you organically. Isn't it nice when a lead just kind of comes to you and finds you? The only way that that can happen is if you include keywords that they might be searching for. Okay, so for example, I might include the keywords key, uh, keynote speaker, LinkedIn expert, social selling speaker and trainer, social selling consultant. I mean, there's all kinds of different ones what people might be looking for. The next step is to share a little bit about your story. Who are you? Why do you do what you do? What made you decide to do what you do? We all have a story there. We didn't just kind of fall into something. Well, sometimes we do. <laughs> um, and then you want to do the, you want to establish your credibility right in, in the beginning of your profile too. Let people know that you, know, you are somebody who knows what you're talking about. Now this is the thing that people forget to do. They make their profiles all about themselves. What you want to do in your profiles, you want to speak to who your ideal clients are. And of course, share how you can help them. You also want to include a call to action. So let's say, for example, somebody lands on your profile and they're like, very interested. I land on Stephanie's profile. I'm interested in what she does. And I think, you know, tomorrow I'm going to reach out to her. And tomorrow comes along and life gets in the way and I get busy and, and I totally forget. And then next week I'm thinking, who's that girl that I wanted to reach out to on LinkedIn? And I can't remember. I can't remember it was Stephanie's profile that I landed on. So, Nobody's taken any action. So you want them to take an action. So tell them what to do. Do you want them to email you, phone you, go to a specific page on your website? Whatever it is you want them to do, let them know. <clears throat> Step six is to build authority. So this is specifically, you know, the, your authority on your topic, what it is you speak about, teach about, consult about, whatever it is that you do. And of course, stand out. Social media is a noisy world. Mm -hmm. Facebook's probably a little bit noisier than LinkedIn, but LinkedIn's not that far behind. Uh, so we really need to stand out. And here's the thing. People say that it's really hard to stand out, and it's not. Because most people do this so poorly. It's actually really easy, especially on LinkedIn. <clears throat> you have seven seconds from the time that somebody lands on your profile, to wow them, <coughs> to grab their attention, to make them want to learn more about you. So the first thing that you want to do when they open their, your profile is you want to have a cover photo. You want to have something that will capture their attention, that looks professional. Uh, you have a graphic designer make it. I don't do any graphics myself, so I'm not going to teach you any kind of ninja tricks on how to go do this. 
It's very inexpensive. But if you're going to be a leader, you need to act like a leader. And you need to look like a leader. And this is very, very simple to do. By the way, if anybody wants to follow me or connect with me on LinkedIn, you're more than welcome to. Please personalize your message, though, because if you don't, I might not accept because I won't know that I met you or saw you guys here. So nearly 80% of people find it almost impossible to overcome a bad first impression. So 80% of the people that land on your profile, if it doesn't stand out, are going to have a hard time overcoming that anytime in the future, no matter how much you impress them. This is a, a, a quick little story about somebody who uh, did exactly what I, I'm teaching you guys to do today. She like literally followed the steps, and within a week, she landed a speaking engagement, speaking in front of 8,000 people. I'm a speaker, and I've actually never spoken in front of 8,000 people yet. So that's pretty cool that this is just this opportunity just landed in her lap just by doing what I'm going to share with you guys today. So let me give you some tactical tips. These are the things that you want to write down and you want to actually implement. The first thing that you need to know is that your headline is the most important part of your profile because it's what's going to get somebody to click. So if they're doing a search or if you sent them a connection request, they're not seeing your cover photo yet. They're not seeing your profile yet. They're just seeing your, your photo, your name, and your headline. So you want your headline to stand out. It's going to determine whether they're going to accept, uh, click accept if you sent them a connection request. It's also going to determine whether they're going to click if they're just looking for somebody that does what you do. So there's three styles of headlines that I recommend, and, and it really depends on you, where you're, you know, your business, and uh, where you're at, and who your ideal clients are. But the first one's keyword focus. So you include the keywords in there that you want to be found for, but that really highlight who it, what it is you do. So for example, mine might say keynote speaker, author, uh, LinkedIn expert, social selling speaker and trainer. That's a keyword. Um, style uh, headline. The second one, which is really impactful, is a client focused one that says, you know, I work with sales teams, so now I'm saying who it is I work with, that are struggling to reach their sales goals. And after working with me, their sales increase by 10 to 50 percent, or 10 to 25 percent. Or I work with business, women business owners that struggle with this, and the result is that. So something that really speaks to who, who they are and what the result is that they can expect in working with you. And the last one is a credibility-focused one. So, you know, I've written some profiles for some uh, people that are, you know, we're top 40 under 40, or they're on the Inc. 500 list, or, you know, they're a Fortune 500 company, or they're, you know, a, a CEO of a large company. Those are going to be really credibility-focused ones. So, international best-selling author, those are like credibility-type ones. So, the next section that somebody is going to come to when they land on your profile to learn more about who you are is your summary section. And I'm going to give you several tips on how to actually create a really effective summary section. But a few things that you need to know. And, and this is counterintuitive to what you might have believed up until now. Your LinkedIn profile is not your resume or CV. It also shouldn't be your professional bio. Because what is that? It's all about you. And what did we just talk about? It needs to be more about them. Yeah, absolutely you need to position yourself as an authority on your topic. Absolutely you need to enhance your credibility and let people know that they're in the right place. But then you really want to go into speaking to them. So you want to share a little bit of your story and why it is that you do what you do. You want to write in first person, not third person. So, for example, I was at an event yesterday where I was speaking, and one of the women there is, uh, is an event planner. She actually puts Tony Robbins on stage, all of the biggest names, Gary Vanderschug, all the biggest names in the industry. And she said, you know, Molly, I have a question for you. You know, you talked about first person. Those guys all have their profiles in third person. 
And I said, well, that's fine. They can do whatever they want when they're a celebrity. Because when you're a celebrity, it doesn't really matter. They're not trying to attract the odd client. But what we have to always remember is that even though LinkedIn's a, a business social network, you still want to be social because you want to build relationships with people. So when you speak in first person and I say, I help X, Y, Z, versus Melanie Dodero is blah, 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 I'm connecting with one person. And when you're writing your profile or you're writing any of your marketing whatsoever, you're only ever speaking to one person at a time. Does that make sense? Are you guys hot? <laughs> I know you're hot, but I know that hot. <laughs> so you want to speak directly to your target market. And you want to make sure that they know when they land on your profile that they're in the right place. You want it to resonate with them. They want to, you want them to be looking for that call to action, where they should contact you. Include some keywords in this section as well. Those same keywords that you put in your headline, you, if you decide to put some keywords in your headline, you want to include them here as well to get found. So here's the formula. So in your summary section, it's a section where you've got 2,000 characters, including spaces. That's not words, that's just characters. And here's the formula in order to write it. You start off with one or two paragraphs about you, sharing a little bit about who you are and your, you know, basically positioning your credibility. Then you go into talking about who your ideal clients are, the problems that they have, and the solutions that you offer to solve those problems. And then you include your call to action. So let's look at that a little bit closer. That's not very visible. So let me show you each component of this. I'm going to break it down to what a credibility section looks like. Now this is mine. It's much longer than I recommend for other, you know, most people. But like I'm like listing, okay, you know, I've been listed as top 50 social uh, sales influencers, top 50 social selling influencers, top 100 marketing influencers, blah, 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 blah. But then I go into saying, but you know, the only recognition that matters to me is improving my clients' lives and their bottom line. It brings me tremendous satisfaction to guide companies through a digital transformation and prepare them to compete and excel in the new digital selling landscape. And then I share a little bit about me. I'm the number one best-selling author of LinkedIn Unlocked, what services I provide, I say I'm originally from Canada, but I now live in Amsterdam, and I serve clients still all over the world. And then, I go into who my ideal clients are. And I say, here's who we help. Now mine is a little bit more complex than most people's. That's why I say don't necessarily follow my model, because I'm, I'm a big proponent in really having some very specific niches. And speaking to you, as few as possible, because you can get a lot more specific. Because of the nature of my business, I attract everything. I attract big companies with sales teams and their VPs of sales. Then I attract business owners, uh, B2B business owners, and individuals. And for them, I have a certain offer that is going to fit their budget. So online courses and workshops and things like that. And then, of course, I speak at events like this. And then I also work with governments, which is really strange. And I never anticipated it, but they've all come to me. So I've trained governments. Actually, I spent a week in the Caribbean this summer, an all-inclusive resort, and negotiated into my speaking contract. And I trained 15 year, uh, Caribbean governments. Uh, in November, I'm going to train a whole bunch of uh, European governments in Germany, I trained governments in Canada, in New Zealand, on how to use LinkedIn. And most of them come to me for different reasons and different purposes, but where I really specialize is in helping them, their economic development uh, division or organizations, in Europe here we call it investment promotion agencies, how to connect companies to communities. 
because everybody's vying for their, their uh, opportunity to have them set up shop, create a manufacturing plant in our area, and create a hundred, you know, a thousand new jobs or twenty thousand new jobs or whatever that might be. So mine is really weird and really diverse. And again, it's just the nature of my business. And then I have a really short, clear call to action. This is one sentence. Want to know how to turn cold connections into clients on LinkedIn and have a full sales pipeline? Email me out. That's it. I'm telling them what to do. Some of you might want to put your phone number up. I've had to remove my phone number everywhere online because it, my phone just rang too much with uh, you know, random people, especially in the very beginning. When social media was just starting out, everybody thought because social media was free, so should everybody, you know, so should all the advice that they get. And people would just call me and say, hey, Millie, I have a question for you. <laughs> Literally in the middle of the night because it was all time zones, and I'm like, oh. So I don't have my phone over anywhere anymore. <clears throat> the other thing that you can do is you can include rich media. So this is videos, it's slide share presentations, PowerPoint presentations, PDF documents, images. I definitely recommend video if you're comfortable with it. If you're not comfortable with video, and I'm not a huge video person, I'm really trying to push myself into it. Because remember I said I'm pretty much a private person, and that's why I chose LinkedIn, so video is a little uncomfortable for me. Um, but I'm pushing myself to do it. And, Slowly, very slowly. Um, but I, when I launched my new book, I created a book trailer video, and then I decided, okay, I really need to have a YouTube channel. So then I created a YouTube channel, channel trailer video, and I've got them there. So your current work experience is very much like your summary uh, section, and but it's a lot easier. So how many of you guys have websites for your business? How many of you are employees for a company versus having your own business? Okay, well, both of you have, either way, if you've got a website for your business or you work for a company, the about page on your website or your company's website usually provides everything that you need in this section. So you start off with the credibility, the company credibility section, right? You know, we've been helping, whatever it is, who would, you know, uh, anybody who's been in business for a long time or has a tremendous amount of experience or has had a company established, even years of experience is credibility. I was working with a company that had been in business for a hundred years and it just came up in conversation that they told me this and I'm like, why isn't this on your website? Why isn't this everywhere? Do you know how huge that is? I don't know if you guys know this, but in the year 1900, the top 100 businesses that existed in the world, by the time the year 2000 rolled around, only 16 of them were left. So that's a huge accomplishment. So just anything about your company to really position the credibility. Then you can just simply list the products and services that you offer. So if you're a website company, a website design company, you can say we do, we do this and we do this, and, or if you're a marketing company, we do this and this and this and this, or whatever type of company it is. If you're a coaching company, you know, these are the kind of things that we help people with and so forth. And then again, a clear call to action. So that might be the exact same call to action that you used in your summary section, or it might be just a little tiny bit different. But the call to action is going to be the same. You want them to either phone you or email you or go to a specific page on your website. The other thing that you want to do is you want to increase your social proof. So ask for recommendations and strike when the iron is hot. Every opportunity you have to ask for recommendations, do it. And then look at your website and look at all the past clients that you've had and turn those uh, testimonials that you've been given into LinkedIn recommendations. You do that simply by contacting that person who sent you that testimony in the first place and said, hey, you know what, I just updated my LinkedIn profile. You know that testimonial you gave me? I'd love it if you could just you know, give that to me as a LinkedIn recommendation. I've copied and pasted it for you right here. <clears throat> and again, Anytime somebody compliments you or sends you an email or any kind of situation, strike when the iron's hot. 
One of the things I did today, which I never do, and I'm terrible at this, is I come to events like this and people will come up to me afterwards and say, hey Melanie, that was a really nice presentation. Thank you so much, you helped me. Well, today I brought a little lapel mic and my iPhone, and anybody who wants to give me a testimonial about this presentation afterwards, please come by, because I need to collect them. I've been really good at collecting LinkedIn recommendations, terrible at collecting video uh, testimonials. So I'm gonna strike while the iron's hot, if you don't mind anybody that's up for it. And then turn your testimonials and your LinkedIn recommendations into case studies. So this is one of my students who I basically took her through and helped her create an entire LinkedIn lead generation campaign. She left corporate America, she's from the US, she started her brand new consulting <laughs> business which was customer experience consulting, helping uh, clients uh, increase their retention and improve their customer service. And from the time she came to me, which is when she started her business, in just seven months she had a sales pipeline doing just what I told her to do. She was a phenomenal student. She did everything I told her to do. And she grew that to $1.45 million. Once your profile's complete, be proactive. What I'm teaching you today isn't gonna have clients lining up for you. This is the foundation. This is where you start, because you don't start reaching out and trying to connect with people until you look really good. Then start being proactive, start generating uh, connections with the right people, start establishing conversations, building rapport, have, you know, moving that conversation offline, naturally and organically. And always remember the WIIFM, that that's all that they're thinking about. So show them that you're the solution. <laughs>